this is something that must be talked about in the football community that you need to be constructive with your criticism and if you are constructive there's nothing wrong in that you're not negative you're not hating upon a team and that must be accepted i love my manager i love my team this means means everything to me but i think yesterday the manager got it wrong and he will learn from it i think making one change and playing the team we did against newcastle was already disappointing and already indicated a tough match and a loss was disappointing one because for me yes top four is important yes league competition is important but you also need to do well in the cup and give yourself a chance to win a trophy and i don't agree with all this nonsense that comes out injury keep the players safe don't risk them why are we thinking like that players can even get injured on training ground they can get ill and hopefully that never happens but this is part of life why do we think like that like i agree for james and for fana and lavia that the injury prone players but last season under pochettino's aerobic sessions palma played mostly whole season and he isn't registered in the conference six score if he even could have started the game yesterday or came after 50 60 minute against a newcastle side who weren't that good i think it would not have harmed us much in that game he still plays against manchester united he gets a eight day rest before the next premier league game we should have at least played some what strong team if not jackson at least palma at least kaiseru i think playing a full b team against newcastle who played most of the full strength was a wrong decision I think for me it's not that manager did not want to win the Carabao Cup he for me he might have believed in the B team too much or he wanted to test them fair enough he got it wrong we move on even constructively criticize that along with that we have a lot of other aspect in the team that must be criticized i think we need to have a talk on Enzo Fernandez we need to have a talk on uh, Barishele Disazi and Jao Felix and Nkuku as well so guys watch till the end like and subscribe and the biggest thing give me your opinion because for me i'm being very very fair in this video So first let's go with the match and see Newcastle had one plan they were pressing the absolute heck out of us and we were not able to play out from the back and Bade Shele how much time can we keep backing him for the 6 months he had under Grant Potter yes he has a potential yes i still like him i still believe there's a player in him but that has to start with consistent performances he had good game against liverpool he had a good performance against liverpool when he came on and he always ha- always show some positive signs but he also has a lot of mistakes in him last season we blame pochettino then we blame injuries at some point consistency has to be there he's still a good player but performance is just a match what he's capable of disazi i said it will be signed him i love his character i still love him i love every chelsea player but for 45 million when we had trevor chuluba this will still be a wrong signing and right now the manager is playing him right back we have tossed him we have fofana we have colwell we have bade shele it doesn't make sense for him to be in the center back and at the right back is better we don't even play him it was awful it's better we give the young boy a chim uh, pong chance and if you can extend his contract because it's better to play the kid than disazi who is not really good right now out of confidence and doesn't suit the right back so defensively we were already all over the place newcastle pressers we were not able to play from the back vega was the one who was coming more deep to receive the ball than enzo fernandez and it was absolutely awful and enzo fernandez as well sometimes in the first half he was not really helping us and a poor performance overall so the first half newcastle got two goals by just our own mistake and after that eddie howe said Let's sit back and just get the game over with. And yes, now I have to say on Jao Felix, he had a pretty, pretty good chance. I think Jao Felix overall had a good game. I won't deny that. I'm still not going over uh, to talk with him. He's still a very, very good player. He has an ability. And for 40, 45 million, it wasn't the worst signing. He's still a good, young, talented player. But with Jao Felix, I never understand. For all the nice work he does in football, all the good creative work in front of goal, the guy cannot blast it into the back of the net. He just tries to glide it, be very nice with it. You don't need to be nice with it. Be dirty, wrap it in the back of the net, and it doesn't do it. You cannot excuse him for the mess he made yesterday. And if he wants to make the case for starting in the starting eleven or making an impact like Neto does, like a Manuke does, he has to do better. For Enkuku, I love Enkuku to bits. He's still a very clinical player, and I still believe he's one of the best players in our team to come from the bench and make an impact. But yesterday was a poor performance. Was a really poor one. Manuke came on and instantly showed what he's capable of. And then I have to go to Enzo Fernandez. How much time can we keep backing this guy? For me, I love Enzo Fernandez. I will again say I love Enzo Fernandez. I don't want to criticize him, but we can't just keep going on six months under Graham Potter where he showed his capability and why he was signed for hundred million. For me, the only manager right now that is using him well is Graham Potter. But right now we have Caicedo and Lavia who work together perfectly. Caicedo plays much more forward. Lavia plays as a DM, and they complement each other really, really well. Next season, we have a player like Esteban Ovalian and Kendry Pais coming up, attacking wingers. So Palmer can even involve in the midfield. Esteban Ovalian could be playing on the right for Chelsea with the Kendry Pais or a mid UK. We have Andrew Santos, who's having a very good time at Strasbourg, can be a likely like replacement for Caicedo. Less ego Chukwu is not having a good loan spell at Southampton, but he's still a very good DM and can be a likely like replacement for Alavia. With right now looking at Enzo Fernandez and Caicedo, Alavia being much better, 
if this season he doesn't do well when will he do well we cannot just keep going on sentiment that we love him we see the ability in him he might work out well for uh, in la liga he might re play, re play really well in syria he might do really well in other leagues but sometimes a player is not made for this league or this team and right now if this season he doesn't do well some serious conversation will need to happen because we have signed him for big money and the big money comes different pressure different expectation and he's a very different player for argentina and he's a very different player for chelsea for me i'm not throwing my toys out of the pram carabao cup fair enough is gone we have more important things to uh, consider that is still the fa cup conference league and we have got the premier league but now winning the match and the game becomes very necessary because for all the positive we've got the season for all the good things we're doing see i'm not a fan that flip flops For me, we lose to United and Arsenal. I still believe we have a better trajectory than Manchester United, better trajectory than Tottenham, better tra uh, trajectory than Brighton or Villa. So I'm still very positive. But let's be honest, we live in a real world. Chelsea lose both these games. Many of our fans will already start going on Instagram and start out or near to it. I know Chelsea fans. We know our own fans. We go over the top. When we win, we go over the top. When we lose, we go more more over the top. And let's be honest. If by this international break, we are behind this Manchester United team. Or just one point above them for a team that sacked their manager, one of the worst team in the league, play the worst football, to be one point behind them or just above them is pathetic. Like for all the positive season we have had, if we go into this international break behind Tottenham, behind Brighton, behind Villa, and then we are near to Newcastle, near to Manchester United, everything can change instantly. This is football, and for me, if we have to show our progress. I think we are better side than Manchester United. I don't care if sack the manager. I don't care if beat Leicester. We are a better footballing side than them. And running an old Trafford with Caicedo, Palmer, everyone fit, and Jackson, James, Fofana, we need to go there. I don't care one nil victory, two nil victory, three one, two nil, three two. We need to go there, have dominant possession, control the play, and beat them convincingly. Because this could be the match which could show Chelsea have gone near to the top. We are near to City, Arsenal, Liverpool, but I want to see us at the top four level, near to Aston Villa or along with them. And this is a match which is going to be a massive indicator. So now to put this disappointment away, we need to go and we need to beat Manchester United, and hopefully we do. Do you agree with me in this video? Do leave it in the comments and like and subscribe.